everyone, welcome to the GRE How To Series where we make studying for the GRE a whole lot more tolerable. I just got back from taking the GRE for the past almost four hours and since we've gone on this journey together, I'm gonna share with you how it went. Stay tuned. Alright, welcome back and a couple things before I dive in. First, I started an Instagram at GRE How To. And let's be real, Instagram is not exactly like where everyone goes for the hot tips on the GRE. But if you're like me and are epically distracted by the wonderful windows into other people's lives, I think that maybe if you see a profile that says, hey, by the way, this is the latest video on the GRE, or hey, if you want to solve a problem with a quadrilateral, do X, Y, and Z, you might say, oh yeah, I'm supposed to be studying and get off of Instagram and get on your books. It's a hypothesis, I'm testing it. So if you want to try it with me and see if it's worth the effort, follow me at, at GRE How To and let me know in the comments below or on Instagram if you like it. If you like it, I will start, you know, putting some posts up there to gently remind you to get back to studying or give you some useful hints while you're surfing the gram. And if you don't, or if no one follows me, then I will stop putting my efforts towards that. Deal? Deal. And the second thing I'm gonna try, um, all these new things. I'm going to start timestamping my videos. So if you want to skip through my ramblings or get straight to the juicy stuff like my score, check down below in the description for the timestamps and what we're going to be covering today. In general, we're going to be covering my GRE test day experience, going from what I wore in the morning, this, <laughs> spoiler alert, um, what I did before the test, the test experience, and the score. All right, cool, I'm hot. I woke up this morning and I was rested because my husband made me go to bed before midnight, which is what I usually stay up to or later. Um, so thanks husband. So when I was at my closet, I literally asked myself the question, what makes me feel great when I am wearing it? And I settled on glitter and Michigan gear. So got like the, the Michigan jacket and my favorite Michigan football share and one of my ML Rose necklaces and earrings. And I'm just like, all right, like I feel ready to conquer the day. I don't know if this has been substantially validated, but I know that when I feel like I look great, I feel great, it makes me more confident. It makes me more ready to seize the day. So that's that. Now, that doesn't mean I went and like put on a full face of makeup, which I obviously did not do because like, why? <laughs> I was trying to like make sure that I ate a good breakfast. For me, I know that eating carbs in the morning makes me more likely to kind of crash in the afternoon. So since I was going to be taking my test in the afternoon and that's not an ideal time to crash, I just opted for two boiled eggs and two pieces of bacon and that was a-okay, which was great. Now, I, I like, I'm not addicted to coffee, but like I enjoy coffee in my life. So I was trying to figure out if I was going to drink coffee today because I've seen some things that say, oh, avoid coffee on test day. And I've also seen some advice somewhere, maybe for the GMAT, it's like, don't, don't change your routine up on the day of test day. Do what you normally do. And, you know, when in face of opposing advice, I went with the one that I liked better. So <laughs> I just, you know, went to my coffee shop and enjoyed just a little bit of time surfing the gram. Yeah, um, looking at YouTube, looking at a couple of my videos, and like kind of chilled out. I know that test time is 
kind of an anxious time, at least it is for me. So I really wanted to have a chill day at my favorite local coffee shop, seeing some familiar faces and just like doing my thing. So for lunch, veggie wrap with garlic sauce with my latte. Um, weird combination, but it worked for me. I don't know if I'm like pulling on a whole bunch of, you know, popular science or whatever, but I'm pretty sure I heard somewhere that garlic is good for you or good for your brain. So I was, I don't know, I like the way they taste. But then I was also, as an afterthought, I kind of vaguely remembered something about the health benefits of garlic. Eat what you like. But because it's a test for the long haul, and I know in my experience with standardized tests, I know that my energy has had the tendency to dip. I packed my purse with a couple pieces of cheese and a protein ball, which is like this sweet kind of grainy ball with peanut butter and honey and good sugars that are, I don't know, low glycemic index. Something that's gonna make it so I don't like immediately crash. Like you don't necessarily want to eat a whole bunch of Swedish fish or something that is crashy. So I packed cheese, protein ball in my in my bag. I meant to bring an RX bar or a Lara bar. I'm sure something like that would work as well. The email that ETS sent beforehand suggested that I get there 30 minutes before and so I did. And one thing I definitely recommend before your test time is to make sure you find out where the bathrooms are. And not only that, make sure you understand how you can access them. Because when I was taking the GMAT, oftentimes the restrooms were locked. So you have to actually go to the receptionist and then get to the bathroom and you know fumble with the key. All that takes time and you have a limited time on your break. In this case, it was an open bathroom and it was pretty, pretty lax, but it was good that I found that out before I started to sit down and take my test where my, my time is a lot more precious. I'm also thankful that I got there early because there were two people ahead of me when I was trying to sign up for the test. So because of security and the process of what happens when you're going to the test, those people you know, were before me, so it took a good, 15 to 20 minutes to get me actually to the computer where I took my test. So just plan ahead. You don't wanna be late because if you're late, bad things happen. The essays were essays. Admittedly, I didn't allocate my time as well on my second essay as I did on my first essay. I think as a general rule of thumb, I think it's good to make sure that you have like around five minutes in the mark, you're probably starting your last paragraph. When there was five minutes left on my second essay, I was on my third supporting paragraph and I had barely started. So I had five minutes to write two paragraphs. So I actually ended up splitting my third paragraph to make like the last two sentences my, conclu my conclusion paragraph. And then while I was rearranging things, I ran out of time. So I definitely started my last paragraph with a lowercase word. Sorry. The rest was, was standard. I actually ended up with three quantitative sections and two verbal sections. And I have to say, I ended up getting a lot more geometry than I had anticipated. And the words on the verbal were not as hard as I'd studied like this whole entire time. Really? Okay, first I'll talk about the quantitative part, right? The quantitative part had a lot of, of what I had prepared in the 500 pound or the five pound book of GRE problems. Like they're there, it's math, there it is. Those questions like, oh, if it was a sweater for a hundred dollars and it was reduced for 20% and then that sale price was reduced by 20% again, how much is the final price? Like shopping math, I got it all the way. That's just like, that's my life. Um, but when you start asking me of like what the area of like arcs and like partial circles, that's when I'm just like, never happened, sir. No, 
I have to say that throughout this whole entire time, I knew that geometry was my weakness and I did do some things to at least make myself capable of answering some of those questions. And that actually did pay off. There was this one question where I had to figure out what an angle, uh, what an exterior angle was. And I instantly knew what to do. I was like, all right, cool. Anyway, I will have videos on like the key things you need to know on geometry. Like you literally only need to know like four things and you are able to solve a lot of the content in the GRE. Now, when I was talking about ge geometry, I, I did focus a lot on triangles and polygons. So what I'm going to focus on now is circles and coordinate planes, because every time I saw a coordinate plane thing, I was just like, I don't know what to do. So bye. The problem was I saw a few of them. So that's not good. All right, so for the verbal sections, those were interesting because like I said before, the words, that I needed to know weren't really as hard as the words that I had been studying. So I, I wonder about the prep that Manhattan and Kaplan kind of give. I don't know if it's the best method. Like maybe they think it's best to give us a whole bunch of random words and the fact that it'll be easier will benefit us or maybe I just got lucky. I'm not really sure. Um, there were words I didn't know on, on the test, but I have to say, I found the verbal to be quite, I wouldn't say easy. <laughs> I definitely wouldn't say easy, but the skills that I was, tr the skills that I was trying to shore up when I was sitting for the verbal aren't the skills that I needed for the test. So that's really great because now that I've taken it, I'm going to re kind of remix my approach to my verbal videos and try to make it so it's gonna be a lot more useful for you than what some of the, the things I had been reading in like Manhattan and all that stuff was for me. So yay, experience. I think now that I've had this experience, I'm going to have a lot more rich insights for you all as I try to put together the right kind of content that's going to help you exceed and live your best life <laughs> in the GRE testing center, as awesome as it can be. Well, by the title, you know that it was above a 300, so that's good. As you know, my goal was to score above 160 on both the verbal and the quantitative part. And unfortunately for the quantitative part, I scored below my goal. I ended up scoring 152, which is actually lower than I had been testing this whole time. But like I said, I know exactly why. It was the geometry and the probability questions. I have a tendency of avoiding things I don't like. <laughs> And those two things are typically the ones that I would avoid. And now I know that I have to double down on those for when I take the test the next time. I had been promising those kinds of videos for, um, for a while now, and I've always started to write them and then kind of just moved on to something else. But you have my commitment to start cranking out some geometry videos, start cranking out the probability videos because those are gonna be the ones that are gonna be really useful for you on the GRE. If you have anywhere near the amount of questions that I had on the actual test. Now, for the verbal though, your girl can read. <laughs> she can do it, she can do it. Um, I scored a 163 on the verbal. So I'm celebrating that victory. Thank you so much for all of your encouragement and all of your engagement. It has definitely been giving me that fuel to push forward. And if this video was helpful for you, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, now's a great time because I know things. I have taken this test. I have seen the mountaintop people and it's gonna be great. Happy studying people. We can do this.